Well, the latest new LG gaming monitors are here, and today we're specifically going to be taking a look at the 27 GP850, which is of their Ultra Gear lineup. Now, previous year models of this line were already very impressive and pretty much checked all the boxes you would want. So this year, they actually managed to still add a lot of significant upgrades that we can talk about. Full disclosure, LG did send me this monitor to review early, but that's not going to affect my thoughts in the review. So first, let's quickly go over the basic specs and some of the main selling points. So this is a 25 60 by 1440 monitor and out of the box it's 165 hertz but it is advertised as being easily overclockable to 180 hertz just by changing a setting in the menu. It has a one millisecond gray to gray response time on the fastest mode, which is actually called faster in the settings. But LG does say that a key point about this monitor is it doesn't have just the same kind of one millisecond response time that a lot of IPS has. And instead it has a kind of advanced IPS one millisecond. And basically that just means that it promises improved levels of reverse ghosting and less noticeable on that fastest setting for response time. So we will take a look at that and see how it holds up. The monitor has full coverage of the sRGB color space, as well as 98% coverage of the DCI-P3 color space. It also has HDR support, and actually interestingly, has Visa Display HDR 400 certification, which is a new certification that basically ensures that monitors that claim to have a certain level of HDR support actually has a certain level of picture quality. And there's also a motion blur reduction feature, which we'll take a look at too. As for the design, it has a really slick looking design, kind of similar looking front panel with the really thin bezels as a couple previous years. The legs, I I think look pretty darn sharp. They do stick out a little bit further than what I'm used to. However, I think this also adds a little bit of stability as a result I found, so it's no problem. The back of it looks like this and there's a kind of cable organizer hook there you can put the things through. And also it is adjustable in the vertical and tilting directions. On the rear, you have two USB 3.1 pass-throughs as well as DisplayPort, two HDMI and a headphone port. Anyway, let's go back to the front and take a look at the panel itself. So the 27 GP850 continues to use nano IPS. IPS panels are already pretty much considered a gold standard of image quality, at least until OLED comes out, but the nano IPS actually adds a little bit extra to improve the quality. And from my understanding, it uses a pretty similar technology to the LG NanoCell TVs. Basically, they apply nanoparticles to the backlight and it basically filters out some extra wavelengths of light that go between the red and green spectrum because these wavelengths sometimes interfere with the final result of the light coming out of the monitor. And you can see in this diagram from the LG marketing material what the difference apparently looks like. And actually, I thought this would be a good opportunity to try out my fancy new spectrometer, which actually can show a full spectrum of what light is coming from a light source. So I just held it up at the screen with a white block on the screen and compared it to a non-nano IPS monitor. And we can look at the difference here. And it actually does indeed pretty much look like the marketing material. There's a lot bigger dip between the red and green. Now, I'll point out that's not really a scientific test. This thing is not really made for measuring TVs and monitors, more for like light sources but still kind of fun to see that it does actually seem to hold up. So yeah, all that being said, it just is a good looking monitor. It's got good contrast levels, good color accuracy it seems, and I also used my hardware colorimeter to calibrate it, and the colors look accurate with that especially too. Now again, one of the major selling points of this monitor is not that it's a really good looking gaming monitor, but also it has that so-called advanced IPS one millisecond response time. And actually, in my experience, it is much improved, so let's talk about that. So basically, in the on-screen display, you can choose between one of the four different response rates. You can choose just off, normal, fast, or faster. The higher the setting, the shorter the response time of the pixels, meaning the lower gray to gray response time down to up to one millisecond on the fastest or faster setting. However, for basically all monitors that have this, sometimes it's also called overdrive, there is a trade-off, which is reverse ghosting. From my understanding, when the monitor goes to try and flip the pixel faster than normal using this overdrive mode or higher response time mode, basically sometimes it can overshoot it, resulting in an object when it moves off of a certain area, the pixels remaining will actually flip harder or flip more to the opposite color, resulting in kind of a brighter and maybe darker, but usually brighter reverse ghost. That's why it's called that. And basically that big point of this monitor is that even though it can go down to one millisecond, it actually reduces the amount of inverse ghosting you would normally see. But does that hold up? Well, we'll take a look. 
With fast, I noticed absolutely zero reverse ghosting. At least if there was, it was imperceptible to the naked eye when using it. So I would probably recommend at least, the very least, using that one. And then if you want to, you can actually try faster. Now on faster, at first I actually did not even notice any inverse ghosting. So that's a big plus. At first I thought, wow, there's not even any here. Now when I kept looking, I did specifically look for it and saw a little bit. However, it is greatly improved from what I was used to in the past. For example, I was using this aim training map on CSGO and you can see it's there when you try to move the circles, have a little bit of a ghosting effect there. But honestly, it's not even really that noticeable when I was actually playing. Just when you slow it down, you can actually see it a little bit more prominently. But when you compare this to my older 27 GL850, which is from 2019, you can see there is a massive difference. Before, I can on that old monitor, the faster setting to be basically unusable. There was just way too much ghosting, it was very obvious. However, now the ghosting, even on the fast setting, is not as prominent, it's dimmer basically, and it's not as big. And that probably has to do with the higher refresh rate. It's just not gonna be as long of a trail of that ghost. I think it really comes down to the type of content on the screen and the situation where there's higher contrast, like very bright and very dark things moving around. That's where it's gonna be a little bit more noticeable. For example, if you're scrolling down a website with black and white text, then that's gonna be pretty obvious because the larger amount of brightness, the pixel has to switch, that's where it's gonna overshoot more. So black text to a white background is gonna result in a more ghosting. But when you're playing a game, it's not gonna be exactly black on white all the time, so it's not gonna be that noticeable. So yes, overall, I would absolutely consider the faster mode as being playable. Now, in some situations or some games, you might say, ah, there's a little bit too much. You can just assign the response time setting as a user-defined control on the on-screen menu, basically like a quick shortcut, so you can easily turn on and off depending on the situation. And honestly, for me at least, they both seem pretty much equally responsive. I can't really tell the extra couple milliseconds of response time. Maybe if you're someone who's really into FPS games with flick shots and you're a master or something like that, you might be able to tell. So basically, both are good, but if you want, you can try faster, and now there's even less ghosting at all, and definitely playable if you want. Next up, I'll also point out that this monitor is indeed G-Sync compatible and FreeSync Premium supported. I have an NVIDIA card, so I can only show you that. And then I believe in the on-screen display, it should say Adaptive Sync, and it'll say on, or it says extended here. I'm not really sure exactly what that means, but as long as it doesn't say off, then you're good to go. And it does work all the way up into the full 180 hertz. You can see when I did a test, I was just kind of whipping my mass around as fast as I could. Even on this pole here, that's pretty vertical where tearing would be obvious. There's absolutely no tearing at all. It looks really smooth. The next feature that got me excited was the Visa, or is it Visa? I don't know. Anyway, the Display HDR 400 certification. And that's because a lot of monitors and displays claim to have HDR, but really it's kind of crappy HDR. So I like that there is finally a certification out there that does actually check whether it's good HDR, and indeed, this monitor does have that. On the Display HDR website, it says the 400 level is a true entry point for HDR, and that does seem to be about right. 400 nits for HDR purposes isn't exactly the brightest, but it'll do, and it is just for that entry level kind of entry point. I tried it on Cyberpunk, for example. I don't know if it'll be able to show on the screen as well, but it actually did look pretty good, where this sign really did look like it was shining out a lot brighter than the rest of the stuff around. And apparently there are mods that people made for Cyberpunk that improves the HDR even further. So really how the HDR is gonna look on a certain game is gonna depend on that game itself. On some games it might be implemented really well, on other games maybe not so much. So overall I think the HDR in this monitor is nice to have. It's not quite there yet I think, so I wouldn't really consider this a single reason to get the monitor, but just nice to have as a bonus. Next up, let's talk about the motion blur reduction feature. Basically, this allows the monitor to strobe the backlight very quickly between refreshes so that the most blurry parts are not even visible and the sharpest parts are, at least that's my understanding. The trade-off of this is that the monitor is going to look a lot dimmer when this is on because the backlight isn't on the full continuous time. Now, if you're in a dim room, like it's at night or something, this is not gonna be a problem. Your eyes are gonna adjust no problem. It's gonna look completely normal. But if you're in a really bright room, it's gonna be like, wow, this is kind of dark. You might not like it. I did the UFO test to see if I could actually notice a difference. And clearly it does do something. So this motion blur reduction does definitely work. Even to the naked eye, I immediately noticed that the UFO looked very much clearer than when it was off. I actually used the super slow motion feature on my camera to record at like 480 and I think 240 FPS. And you can actually see the strobing of the backlight. That's completely imperceptible by the way when you're actually using the monitor. It only shows up at incredibly fast slow motion speeds. So hopefully I can kind of demonstrate here how much sharper it does look with the motion blur on, but 
trust me, it does look a lot clearer. So with the test, it's definitely obvious that it works, but in practice, I honestly couldn't really notice that much of a difference when I was playing CSGO, probably because it's such a high refresh rate, there's not all that much motion blur anyway, but it might be just down to how sensitive you are to motion blur, and also probably the type of game you're playing. For me personally, I didn't really notice that much motion blur, at least it didn't bother me, but maybe if you're playing a racing game or I don't know, some other kind of game where there's lots more motion, then you might be able to notice it. Finally, let's just kind of go through all the menu options to see what kind of settings you can change. So basically this is the on-screen display that pops up when you press the joystick on the bottom, and on the left and right, you have the two different options where you can choose those as basically quick options. We'll see that later. In the actual settings, the first tab is for game mode, and this is basically the picture profile you can choose. For Gamer 1 and 2, these are probably what you're mostly going to use. This allows all the different custom picture adjustments. And then there's also some preset picture modes, such as FPS, RTS, Vivid, Reader, HDR Effect, and sRGB. In the Game Adjust tab, this is basically all the game features. So you have motion blur reduction in here. You have the overclock setting if you want to turn that on. Probably no reason not to. There's one for Adaptive Sync. For me, it's grayed out. That might be different if you're using FreeSync Premium, but Either way, it's gonna work. There's black stabilizer, which apparently adjusts the saturation of dark things, so it might be easier to see in shadowy areas in a game. There's the response time setting we were talking about before. There's a crosshair and an FPS counter. The picture adjust tab is where you basically do all the different calibration stuff if you want. You can change the brightness in here, the contrast, sharpness, gamma, all that. You can change the color temp and actually specify the different RGB levels or do six color adjustment for the actual specific RGB hue and saturation levels like cyan, yellow, all that. In the input tab, it's pretty much what you would expect in there. In the general tab, this is where you choose the user defined keys that show up in the left and right of that pop-up and just some other basic stuff that's not too interesting. Interesting. So finally, in my opinion, what's the final verdict on this monitor? Should you consider it if you're looking for a new gaming monitor? And I definitely think yes, it's a great monitor. The $500 price tag is pretty much what you would expect in this level of range, but it also has some of those extra features we talked about, like that advanced IPS. I think the 180 hertz refresh rate is pretty good. It's not the fastest on the market. There are some 240 out there. However, in my experience, I did used to have a 240 hertz monitor, and it was not as big of a jump as going from 144 to 240, not nearly as much of a jump as from 60 to 144. So 180 already taking a step up from there, I would be hard pressed to really notice a major difference between 240 and 180 anyway. I was definitely impressed with that improved ghosting on the fastest mode, and of course on the fast mode, which is pretty much just as good as far as I could tell, there was no ghosting at all. So if you're someone who absolutely has to play on that lowest one millisecond latency, and you're someone who can tolerate a tiny bit of ghosting, that's definitely a big point. And of course being an IPS and a nano IPS at that, it has really good picture quality. So overall, it's just a really great monitor, I think, that checks pretty much all the boxes for really what you would want in a gaming monitor and even adds some extra little stuff in there too. So if you want to check it out, I'll put the link in the description to LG's website where you can read more about it. And also once it's available on Amazon, I'm not sure if it is right now, I'll put that link down there when that is. Anyway, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Did you think this is a really good improvement or whatever? We can talk about that down there. If you guys want to keep watching, the next video I think you should watch is where I talked about some really weird HDMI cables that you may have never seen before, such as the strange type E HDMI cable. If you want, you can just click on that right there and go watch that. So thanks so much for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video.